In this video, I'm going to show how to debug a button in Google Sheets and Scripts. So I know that this button isn't working because someone told me. I also know that someone added a column to this sheet, which probably broke the button. So here's how you'd walk through it step by step. The first thing I'll do is either two finger click or command click on this button. You'll see that those three dots there, I'll click on those, click on assign script, and I will copy the name in this box because this is the script that runs when you click this button. So that's how I need to go and find that script and fix it. Don't cancel out of this or X out of this because it will then delete what was here. You have to click OK. I will then go to Extensions, App Scripts. And I'm in the old editor because the old editor makes it easier to Command F and search the entire, all of these files at the same time. The new editor, if you click here, might not. So just something to keep in mind. But I'm going to Command F to open up this box. Command V, paste it in. Click Find. And it will tell me here where this script is. So I'm going to go to that sheet. I'll click find again. And here it is. So this is where I am running when I click that button over here. This script runs here. And so I'm going to walk through this. And I know, as I mentioned, I know a column was added, which is probably what broke it, which means I'm looking for a column number that's hard coded that doesn't change. Because in some cases, like these sections right here, you'll see I actually get the column number from the title of the column. So I, I look at the, this row, and based on whatever the title is, that's how I know the column number. So those won't break if you add a column. But somewhere in here, something is going to break because I know it broke, and because it's probably something hard-coded. So the first thing I'm going to do is just comment out these last two rows of code, because then I know that these are the two that actually do the work here and will change the spreadsheet. So now I can test run the script without changing the file and log things. And by logging things, you'll see in here, very often I'll log things that as I run it so that I can so I can debug and see what's happening. And they'll go to in this section logs, view logs, or you can do command enter. And in there there's this log and there's this other log. Some things will log to here and some things will log right to here. So just keep that in mind. You may have to check both places. You may have to refresh because it's slow sometimes. So anyway, so let's see what we're what we have going on here. So this is the script that runs. As you can see, I have lots of comments. I do a lot of commenting just to make it easy to remember what I did. And I do a lot of logging also. I, you can take these out after you do the writing, but I just leave them in there because it's not a big deal. We're not doing anything too heavy. It'll slow down the script ever so slightly. So no real reason not to leave them in if you want to. So here I just gather some basic data. Here I have my comments saying what's happening. Anytime there's that double slash, the computer will not run that. It's not code, it's just English language. Here, as I mentioned, I grab some column numbers, and then I just do a bunch of things. I'm not going to go through every row of code, but I'll say that I'm looking for hard-coded column numbers, which looks like this section is what I'm looking for, because those are hard-coded column numbers, obviously, and likely to break if someone adds a column. So I could either just change this right now to the correct column number, or I can fix it long term in case someone does change it again. So in this case, I'm just quickly going to fix it long term because it's a good example to do. So I'm going to make this recipe ID batches column number. And I'm going to get that the same way I get these other ones right here. Right? And then I'm going to do something just like this. Variable that equals, and I'll just grab this thing also just like I have it for these other ones. And I'll just change the column title to whatever I want it to be. So I want the it was column 18. So let's go and find it was column so it was index 18, not column 18. So you start counting from zero, not one. So it's zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this is what was there. Now I know a column was added. So this is the title I'm looking for because it wasn't 18, now it's in 19. So I'm just gonna grab that, I'll paste it in there. And now we'll see, that should fix that one. So let's just see, let's go back here. Let's go back here, let's run it. And so it's running the script. Oh, so I forgot to, how it works is it grabs the row that you're in. So now I'm in row 1154, which is what we wanted to do. I'll click reduce it. And you saw there's some documentation that if you had so I'll leave it there for a second. I'll click yes so it finishes the script, but you'll see that in the script I have these notifications to help people make sure they don't make mistakes. So in that last case, it got a warning because it knew you were in the wrong row. 
or knew I was in the wrong row. And so now it's finishing the script, and now I can go here, and I can, as I said, command return to see the data that's happening. And if I needed to, I could, this is all stuff that's getting logged, I can just make sure that this looks like it's working properly. So down here where it was 18, it was 18 right here, and now I have this. So let's see, so let's see if this is now logging the correct one, logger log, recipe ID batches colon. So let's see if I can find that in here, recipe ID batches, there is logical conclusion. So it looks like it's working now. So now, because it got the recipe column, not the other column that it was getting before. So now, let me uncomment it out, and now it should work fine. So that's it.